Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best places to buy model trains of all scales. This is a question which I get asked quite regularly, and I do have some opinions on it, which I thought I'd share. I'm going to be going through each category today based on knowledge, pricing, honesty, and availability, and giving them a score for each category on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best and 1 being the worst. Now obviously, uh, before I get into this, I just want to quickly say that uh, everything I'm going to talk about today is going to be subjective. It's either based on my own opinion and experiences or based on what I've heard from the community. So just because I say something's likely to be a certain way doesn't mean it's the rule. You might have a different experience. And I also understand that based on where you live, your experience might be different based on what hobby shops you have in your area and so on. Anyways, I'm going to get into this now. I'm going to start with a classic one and that is good old fashioned train store and hobby shops. Now for any of you who have watched this channel for a while now, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of good old brick and mortar train shops. Based on the ones that I'm around and a lot of the ones I've been to around the world, I've had quite a few positive experiences there. I find uh, from a knowledge standpoint, they're usually uh, pretty good. The majority of ones that have a decent selection of model trains are, are gonna know some stuff about what they're selling. And if you have any questions on what you're buying, they're likely gonna have good answers for you. When I was uh, getting into the hobby back in 2006, they were very helpful with setting up my first layout. I've been to uh, so many train stores where they've had really good knowledge on what they're selling in terms of used stuff, which I find also has a good effect on the price. Sometimes when people don't know what they're selling, they overestimate what something is worth. So uh, for good old train stores, I'm going to give them a knowledge score of 9 out of 10. Now, I do understand that uh, some of the stores out there are price gougers, so for pricing, I'm only going to give them a 5 out of 10. I find most hobby shops sell things at an average market value. There haven't been too many times where I've gone to a train store and felt like I've walked away with an incredible deal. Most of the times when I find something at a good price at a train store, it's a decent deal. So I'll give them a 5 out of 10 on pricing. Now, in terms of honesty, I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. And the reason I say that is because brick and mortar hobby shops have a bit of a reputation to uphold since they have an actual location. They can't run these fly-by-night operations where they go around scamming people. You know, they, they don't want to risk getting a bad review. And they want to build up a good reputation with their customers because they might have these same customers for decades. So I find uh, generally most hobby shops are pretty honest. I have had a couple bad experiences, but for the most part, every time I've bought something from a hobby shop, it has been exactly as it was described. Now, as for availability, I'm only going to give them a 5 out of 10, and that's because, again, depending on where you live, you might have one nearby, but I find in most cases you do have to drive 20, 30 minutes to get to a hobby shop. And unfortunately, a lot of hobby shops over the last few years have been closing down, not necessarily because they're going out of business, but because the owners are just deciding to retire. So the availability isn't really getting any better in that regard. And if you're not near any major cities, I think it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have a hobby shop in your town. So the availability is not the greatest. Anyways, moving to the second place that I personally buy a lot of model trains from, and that is online slash eBay. Now, before I talk about eBay, I'm going to talk about hobby shops which have an online presence. Uh, a lot of train stores out there do have uh, an online aspect. Sometimes they have an eBay store or they have their own uh, sort of interface. I find their shipping prices are usually slightly better than eBay. And since it is associated with an actual store, I do find that the honesty tends to be pretty good, as well as the knowledge for buying from online hobby shops. I feel like things are pretty positive. There is also other options like Train World, Trains.com, websites like that. And I find generally people seem to have pretty positive things to say. I have heard some bad stories from both of those retailers, but the majority of people I've heard from about these places seem to have good things to say. Now, eBay is a bit of a funny one because as I said, sometimes you get a hobby shop which is selling stuff, which in that case, you know, it's probably going to be okay. But anybody can sell things on eBay. So you don't necessarily know who you're dealing with or how much they know about what they're selling. Sometimes you get people who think that their, you know, Spirit of 76 is worth $200 and they put it up there as such. Then you have other people who don't know what they're selling and they sell things cheaper than they should be. So in that case, you can get a good deal. So I find the prices for eBay are all over the map. 
The only thing I will say about eBay is the shipping cost is quite high. So in terms of knowledge, I'll give eBay sellers a six out of 10 because I find most of them are pretty good, but there is some bad ones mixed in there. So you do have to be careful. Uh, as for pricing, I'm only gonna give them a three out of 10 because I find eBay's shipping prices are pretty bad. And uh, I also find there seems to be more demand than there is supply on eBay. So it is harder to find a good deal. I find usually if you do find something at a good price on eBay, it's in the newly listed section because good deals which are not auctions get snapped up very fast on eBay. Uh, in terms of honesty, I'll give eBay sellers a 6 out of 10. The majority of experiences I've had have been positive, but uh, as you've seen on this channel, there have been a few duds on here. Uh, luckily, eBay takes feedback very seriously, so there is still a bit of a reputation that they want to uphold, but there are swindlers, as there are with every category, so you do have to be careful. Now, in terms of availability, I'm going to give eBay a 10 out of 10, because obviously, since they're shipping this stuff to you, unless you're somewhere that's really remote, you're probably gonna be able to get whatever the item is. I haven't had too many problems in that regard. So uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 in terms of availability. And you're probably also gonna be able to find very specific items, because obviously if you're looking for something in particular, there are so many items on eBay, they probably will have it somewhere. Now, the third thing I'm gonna talk about is good old train shows. Now, uh, in terms of knowledge, I'm gonna give them an eight out of 10, just because I find a lot of people selling stuff at train shows are usually people who have been in the hobby for 30 years and uh, they know a lot about what they're selling. And if you have a question about the item or its condition, you usually can ask them. Sometimes they even have a test track, so they can be pretty helpful in that regard. Uh, in terms of pricing, I'm gonna give train shows an eight out of 10. Sometimes you do see some price gougers, but generally uh, there's a, a lot of people at train shows who really just wanna offload stuff they don't want anymore. And in those cases, you can make off with some incredible deals. The best deals I think I've ever had buying model trains have been at a train show. Uh, they're just an incredibly economic way to buy trains so they're very good for pricing uh, in terms of honesty I'll give them a 5 out of 10 and uh, I find most people selling stuff at train shows are honest about the condition, but they don't have that same need to hold up a reputation, I find, as well as eBay sellers and hobby shops do. So I have been swindled a couple times at a train show, and uh, sometimes you get people who, you know, kind of play dumb as to what they're selling when, you know, in reality they know it's junk and they try to play it off like it's something good. So, um, yeah, you do have to watch out at train shows. They're, they're running a business which is open one day and, and, and gone the next, so just... Uh, keep that in mind but again that all depends on the seller if you have one you've dealt with before that's usually a sign that you know you're gonna get something good in terms of availability I'm only gonna give train shows a 2 out of 10 uh, for two reasons first of all uh, they're not the most common things you know some of them come around two times a year in a town if you're lucky so trying to find train shows is a little bit tricky their advertising is usually not great and uh, on top of all of that I find they tend to be in remote areas where the rent is cheap you know at community center arenas and stuff like that so the availability is really poor so if you can find one you know you've got an opportunity to get some of the best deals out there but only if you can find one now fourth I'm going to talk about things like Facebook marketplace and Craigslist buy and sell groups that sort of stuff in terms of knowledge you do get some people who have been in the hobby for a while and know what they're selling but I find more often than not somebody's dug out a bin of old train stuff and they think that they're sitting on gold and they overlist the prices like crazy and they assume it's in working order and stuff so there is quite a huge risk there. So in terms of knowledge, I'm only gonna give them a four out of 10. Now, in terms of pricing, things are all over the map. Like I said, sometimes people dig up some old train stuff and they have one of two reactions. One, they're sitting on gold, one, it's an old toy. So if they think it's an old toy, they'll sell it for way less than it's worth. If they think that they're sitting on a collectible, they'll price, you know, old Tycos and lifelikes for like, you know, 200 bucks a pop. I've seen some insane prices on Facebook Marketplace. So if you look around enough, sometimes you'll find a good deal, but I find more often than not, the price is not so good. So five out of 10 for that. Uh, in terms of honesty, I'm gonna give Facebook Marketplace sellers a two out of 10. Uh, again, it does depend on the seller, but they have even less of a reputation to uphold than the train show dealers. And uh, on top of that, even just outside buying model trains, I've been swindled several times over Facebook Marketplace. A lot of times people are trying to get rid of something which they know is not great. And because there just isn't much recourse if they swindle you, I find there tends to be a lot of dishonesty there. So if ever you're buying something over Facebook Marketplace, uh, do be careful and make sure you inspect whatever it is you're buying to make sure you're not getting ripped off. because. Uh, I have heard some pretty bad stories. 
In terms of availability, I'm going to give Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist all the others. This is kind of what I'm talking about. A 8 out of 10. So obviously, you know, you could find out your neighbor's selling model trains. It could be somebody who's three hours away. So the availability does have the potential to be good, but it all depends on, you know, just what's going on in your area. But generally, I find when you pop on Facebook Marketplace, there's some stuff for sale. So the availability is not too bad, especially if you don't have any train stores nearby. It is worth, you know, checking out. And now finally, I want to talk about the last category, and that's antique shops and flea markets. Now, uh, in terms of knowledge, I find it's usually people who are digging through an estate and they find some trains and just like the Facebook marketplace sellers, they don't really know what they have. And again, they assume it's gold or they assume it's a toy. So yeah, you're probably not going to get a description of what the working order is or even really what they're selling. A lot of them just don't even know. So um, I would be uh, quite careful. In terms of pricing, I will give them a five out of 10, just because if they assume wrong, you can get some amazing deals. I've bought, you know, working locomotives for $3 at antique stores, but uh, then you have, you know, again, the $200 Tyco. So five out of 10 on pricing. Uh, in terms of honesty, I'm gonna give them a two out of 10. It's not necessarily because they're being dishonest, but there's a little bit less of a reputation to uphold when they're selling things as is and you know again a, a lot of them just don't know what they're offloading so they might claim something's in working order when in reality they don't even know uh, in terms of availability i'm going to give them a four out of ten and uh, the reason i say that is because most people have an antique store or flea market in their town but the reason the availability is lower than the train stores is because not all of them carry model trains or some of them carry, you know, it's what it's what the people selling stuff there have found, right? So sometimes they'll have a, a whole box of model trains, other times they'll have absolutely nothing. So, you know, it's a little bit of a mixed bag there. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for all the categories today. I hope you all found this helpful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments because, uh, again, everybody's had different experiences out there. So I'd love to hear what yours have been and which is your favorite. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.